Hello, this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Wednesday, the 17th of June, 2008, and the market's closed. S&P 500 uh, lost $1.38, or just over 1%. And that shouldn't be a surprise, as the market's been flashing some warning signs here recently with a breakdown of this uh, important level of support near 137. That 137 level was tested and held as resistance yesterday. Uh, traded this big red candle, and uh, we saw that the rally up to that prior level of support occurred on diminishing volume and that gave us reason for concern uh, what we were looking for was a uh, uh, you know continued downside in here and I said that uh, it looks like we're headed for a test of this low here at 133.50 um, we didn't get that today, but it looks like this market ought to probably continue lower. There's no reason to think that uh, this this trend is going to reverse it, reverse itself uh, quickly here. Um, looking at the hourly time frame, here's that 137 level and how it had acted as resistance. We've got a uh, once again we've got a five-day moving average that's declining, and then uh, you know taking out this low, we'll put a uh, a lower low in place. And uh, from there, I think uh, the next potential target on the downside is right here at about 132 and a quarter. That's where we have the potential for some support to be found. However, the you know we've got a badly damaged market, as I mentioned yesterday, declining 10, 20, 50, 100, five-day moving average. You know, all these moving averages are heading lower. It means there's a flow out of the market. Um, and it comes after testing this larger level of support, which did act as resistance. So uh, it's still not unusual to expect a uh, return to, to test these lows, if not to uh, continue lower. So this market remains in a lot of trouble, and there's no reason to be looking for any type of bottom in here and uh, you know throwing your money uh, uh, away, basically trying to, to pick a bottom. There will be rallies, of course, always in, in a downtrend, but those rallies are typically short-lived. And when we have... Uh, good clues like we've been seeing from volume trend and that sort of thing, then uh, you've got to pay attention to those and say what's most likely. Not what could happen. I mean, you always want to be aware of what could happen, but, uh, you know, in order for this market to reverse, I, I wouldn't uh, begin to start thinking uh, bullishly beyond, a, a you know, a, a quick scalp trade. Uh, on the long side unless it was to get maybe above 136 or so but this market's clearly still badly damaged and uh, looking like it's probably gonna head down towards at least this level and uh, we can you know see we see what happens there and uh, see see if buyers show up and somehow save this trend but uh, it's it's not very likely the trend is established lower and uh, that's you know you've got to respect the trend the uh, financials um, this low right here from Bear Stearns was taken out on an intraday basis today. That uh, that low on the uh, Bear Stearns low was uh, 22.29. Uh, the low last week was 22.33, and it closed uh, at 22.41. So 22.41 is still a closing low, uh, but today the 22.29 level was taken out. We saw an intraday trade down at 22.27. So this market continues to hit new lows on an intraday basis. And uh, we saw reason for concern in here as well with this rally on the bigger volume followed by light volume on the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the decline on the increasing volume in here followed by the drop off in volume on the, on the, uh, on the bounce, and that just shows that the buyers didn't have much conviction. It was more of probably just a little bit of short squeeze, uh, you know, shorts buying in, into uh, the uh, into, into it to, to lock in some profit so it wouldn't get away from them. But now here we are right back down on the lows, and the financials remain a very sore spot for a lot of people. I've been saying it consistently for, you know, le don't try to pick a bottom in here. Let the let the foreign financial, you know, uh, sovereign funds, let them buy Citicorp. Let them buy Lehman Brothers and some of these other troubled financials. You don't want any part of them until this market turns itself around, and it's going to take a lot of time. When you have this much deep damage, there's a lot of, you know, the, there's bad psychology in this market. There's a lot of bad feeling associated with these stocks, and, and rallies are generally going to be met with more supply. So good group just to stay away from. The, uh, the Russell 2000, um, you know, we saw, let me just redraw these lines, and we saw the uh, trend line break last week, and after, after the market, uh, you know, leapt above that 200-day moving average, and from that move, we saw this failed move. Now, you know, we could take a look even, you could, you could take a look at what's uh, called the measured move, and you could say the height of this move, so point A to point B, then you would call this, uh, this point B to point C. What we could then do is take a measured move from this height here, 
uh, from this from the height of that down to here and that will give us a downward objective near about seventy dollars a share and that's a, a you know simple measured move is, is what it's called the height of this um, decline followed by the uh, the counter trend rally and then a further leg lower you know this is where it looks like this market may be heading of course you can't keep you know you can't look too far uh, below the market because obviously at 71.75 that's the level I've been saying is really going to be the more important level for this market to hold uh, breaking below that though would confirm that we do have a new downtrend on the daily time frame we have this high we have a lower high we have this low and breaking below that low at 71.75 would put us in a downtrend on the uh, uh, Russell 2000 We've seen the 10 and 20 day moving average cross. Like I said yesterday, moving average crossovers represent indecision as we have a, a battle being fought here. The short term, the sellers are in control. Intermediate term, they are now as well. The 50 day moving average is heading higher, but it's starting to slow down and flatten out. So it leaves this market very vulnerable, very similar to uh, what we saw in the S&P 500. That first test of the 50 day, the second test, and then it failed quickly thereafter. The uh, Russell 2000 is looking very similar to that, maybe a couple weeks behind, but uh, it seems as though uh, unless this market can somehow get back above 74 and a half or so, it seems like we're headed probably for a test of that $70 level, and the uh, first line of defense for the for the bulls will be found here, or the more important level uh, will be found right here at about 71, 75, followed by 71, and then of course we've got that 70 dollar level which is is looming uh, lower as well the uh, you know the big story in here is oil oil continues along this uptrend in here and uh, this was just uh, some old trend lines I had drawn in but this prior level of resistance is acting as support in here and oil holds up very strong this is just a picture perfect uptrend here in oil it's not what we want to see obviously because the uh, you know it has dramatic uh, consequences to the economy and therefore the market but uh, you know, respect the trend and, and look at it here this way: is that you know, is this market just pausing before it surges higher? A pause in an uptrend is typically just the pause that refreshes before it breaks out. And the uh, the, the the range in here is you know, resistance up near 112.75 or so, follow uh, and support found at about 106 and a half. In here, we're just in a very choppy range right now, and there's really not much edge in there. If you look at today's trading, it was pretty, you know, we, we started out sellers in control. It leapt back above that daily VWAP, and then real strong rally in here after about 1230. Speaking of VWAP, I wrote an article for tradingmarkets.com. I've got a link on the blog, so make sure you take a look at that. Um, it talks about the, uh, um, the couple of stocks that I'd mentioned in the video from this past weekend, and what you know a, a way that I like to enter stocks that have traded uh, that that, is, that actually have gapped in the direction uh, that I was expecting them to move and, and how I like to handle that. Uh, the Nasdaq 100 was down 52 cents or about one percent here, and we've kind of got the same picture in here. We've got this uh, we've got this high followed by this high, and we've got this low. So what confirms a downtrend is a move basically below 47 dollars a share in here. The 10 and 20 day moving average have crossed. The 50 day moving average is still advancing and the market's still kind of toying with that 200 day moving average as well. So we're, we're right on that $48 level. And this has been a very important level here over the last month and a half. So we're not quite broken on the NASDAQ, but just with all the other damage throughout this market, it seems as though this is also inevitable that this 50 day moving average flattens out. Uh, as the market continues lower and takes out this uh, $47 level. Listen to the message of the market, though, and the market is saying it broke below that 48.50 level, and, uh, you know, 47.75 was the uh, next level where we expected the uh, buyers to show up, uh, or with the level that would be defended, rather, and 47.75 right in here was defended for a while in here today, um, but this market uh, did not close very strong. Uh, we've got just kind of a neutral day in here today, uh, but clearly the, uh, the you know the 47.75 breaking below there. Then it looks like we've got a test of that $47 level, and once that $47 level comes and goes, then we've got a clear downtrend in here. And downtrends, in my mind, are bear markets, and those are not good times to be a buyer. 
Uh, by the way, I'd mentioned on my blog yesterday, but I will be at the uh, trade show in uh, Ontario, California. I'll be there Friday and Saturday, so drop me an email and let me know if you're going to be there, and I'll figure out a way that we can all kind of meet up uh, out there and maybe have a drink or something.